It's right this way, folks. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Pomerantz, I believe you've forgotten something. Yes, Mr. Pomerantz. <laughs> oh. Georgie, you're so strong. No, you're light as a feather. Well, folks, this here is the honeymoon suite. Oh, George, it's all so perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> well, if there's anything else you folks need. No, no, that's everything. Thank you. Here. Wow, a quarter. Hey, thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I guess I really should unpack these things before they get too wrinkled to wear. Oh, forget that, honey. All we need is our uh, night clothes. Yes, George. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll get ready for bed. How about you? Me? Not really tired. Guess all the excitement of the wedding and the reception stimulated me. I mean, I'm wide awake. <laughs> But don't you want to go to bed? Oh, well, eventually, George. But can't we talk a little first? Talk? Oh, what's wrong, Martha? You seem so, so scared. It's me, George, your husband, who loves you very much. There's nothing to be scared of. You do love me, don't you? Oh, I do, George. I do. I just like to talk a little, that's all. We've hardly said anything to each other all day. Well, we said what counts, Martha. I do. But if you want to talk, sure. It was a beautiful wedding, wasn't it, George? Yes, dear. And the reception. Do you think everyone had a good time? Well, there was plenty of free punch, wasn't there? Wasn't it nice of the whole gang to chip in and buy us that gift? Mm. Just what we need, our sixth toaster. Well, it's a thought to count. And it was so good to see them all. Sarah, Googie, and Miles. Yeah, especially Miles. Boy, the way he kissed you, you'd think he was the groom. Oh, George, Miles is an old friend. An old boyfriend, you mean? I believe you're jealous. You're darn right I'm jealous. Why'd you let him kiss you like that? What was I supposed to do? Beat him off with a club? Toaster would have done nicely. George, please. It's our honeymoon. Let's not argue. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. And I promise. I'll never mention Miles Thorncroft again. Never. Besides, I married you, didn't I? Georgie Porgy. How can I be mad when you call me that? Well. I ordered us a midnight supper. We might as well make ourselves comfortable while we wait. Oh, all right, George. But you go first. <laughs> Whatever you say. You almost ready, dear? Almost. George? Yes? What were you and Daddy talking about before we left? Oh, he offered me a job with him at the drugstore. Offered me $35 a week. Really? Oh, George, that's a wonderful opportunity. If you want it, that is. Uh, I suppose I should take it for now. Of course, as soon as we save enough, I'm going to quit so I can write my novel. Yes, George, just as soon as we have enough. Mrs. Pomerantz, you're beautiful. Let me. Okay. Champagne! Shh. I bought it at a 
speakeasy. It's important. Can't I? Think. George, it's all so expensive. Mm. Nothing's too good for Mrs. George Pomerantz. A wonderful life, filled with happiness, riches, and love. Well, I'm happy as long as I have you, George. That's all I need. But do you mind very much living with my parents? No, I don't mind. Besides, it won't be for long. Pretty soon we'll have our own place. Tell me about it again, George. Well, it'll be a nice house. And big. At least three bedrooms. And a parlor and a sitting room. And a sewing room for you. And it won't be long now, Martha. The president said prosperity is just around the corner. Oh, it sounds wonderful, George. Well, we won't always be home. No, sir, we're going to travel. Paris, France, London. All over the world. We'll never be bored. Richie, let me get a job and help out. Oh, we've been all through that before. No wife of mine is going to work, and that's final. for generations. The oldest son gives it to his wife on his wedding night. Mom says those are real jewels. I hope you don't think it's too flashy. No, I love it. And I'll never take it off. Thank you. <sighs> well, we've certainly had a busy day. <laughs> George? Yes? I never asked you, but you do want children, don't you? Kids? Well, I guess so, sure. But not right away. I want us to have a few years to ourselves. Oh, this is such a big bed, and you're so far away. There, that's better. In case I haven't told you lately, Mrs. Pomerantz, I love you very much. And I love you, George. George, have you known other girls before tonight? Well, yes, a few. Does that bother you? No. I'm just glad one of us knows what they're doing. <laughs> who were they? What? The other girls. Who were they? Oh, just girls. I didn't love them or anything. Oh, I know that, George. But who were they? Well, if I tell you, you'll only be jealous. No, I won't. I'm just curious. Was Rachel Merman one? Well, yeah, I went out with Rachel a couple of times. Her? Well, what did I tell you, Martha? Let's change the subject, okay? Aren't you even curious about the other boys in my life? No. <laughs> what other boys? I'm just kidding you, George. I only love you. And always will, I promise. Me too, Martha. Always. Only you. Well, but let him be calling us here at a time like this. Hello. Oh, hello, Mother Grady. It's your mother. Hello, Mother. What? Yes, George drove carefully. <laughs> yes. Yes, I will. Yes. Yes, Mother, everything's just fine. Whoever heard of Bella Hops on strike? Everyone's striking nowadays. Why not husbands? George, haven't you forgotten something? Don't tell me you've got more luggage in the car. No, I mean me. 
But you're right here. George Pomerant, 40 years ago today, you carried me over this threshold. I want you to do it again. It'll be romantic. It'll be painful. <laughs> George? Okay, okay. Help me. It's going out again. Honestly, your back goes out more than we do. Exactly lighter than Philly, you know. I haven't gained a pound in no. 40 years. You just gained them in groups of 10. George, are you sure that this is the same honeymoon suite? Looks awfully stabby. Eh, maybe rooms don't age any better than people. <laughs> I wrote and expressly asked for twin beds. You know I can't stand all your talking and turning. I'll be thankful for small favors. It's the first privacy we've had in 40 years. George Pomeran, you're always complaining. We've had plenty of privacy. Oh, yeah? When? We lived with your folks the first five years, not to mention Stevie arriving the first year. And when we finally buy a house, your mother moves in with us. Some privacy. Well, it isn't as if he took our room. And if we had a decent house, he wouldn't have to sleep on the living room sofa. Well, keep it up or she can have my beds. Well, here you. Not anymore, they won't. Good night. George Pomerant, you get up this minute? This is my second honeymoon. I don't want to spend it alone. Oh, come on, Moth. I'm tired. I worked all day. Work. You drank too much at our anniversary party. Well, you weren't exactly sitting on the sidelines yourself, you know. Uh, what does that mean? You know exactly what that means, hot lips. <laughs> Brother. You'd think Miles Lips would be worn out after all these years, but no, he's still at it, kissing and grabbing. <laughs> Miles this and Miles that. That's all I've heard for 40 years. And I'm sick of your jealousy. You're sick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you It's our anniversary. Let's not argue, Georgie Porting. Well, stop calling me that dumb name. Look, I'm old. I'm tired. I just want to go to sleep. Well, I came for a second honeymoon. And I'm going to have it, whether you like it or not. Room service? Uh, uh, this is room 1014. I would like to order a nice cold bottle of champagne. Uh-uh. You're on the wagon, remember? Uh, change that to warm milk instead. Yeah, and order me some prune juice. You know how travel upsets me. Yeah, me too. Uh, and a glass of prune juice. Large. Mm. Thank you. Well, let's get ready for bed, huh? I'll sleep the way I am. I said bed, George, not sleep. <laughs> Georgie. Darling. Georgie, it's a special occasion. <clears throat> Where are you going? To change. Oh, no, you don't. For once, I get to be first. George. Sorry. <laughs> Well, there's a glass out here that will do just as well. Okay, it's all yours. Unzip me, George. So all of a sudden you're helpless? <laughs> Room 
service. Oh, I'll get it. You see me arguing? A minute, I'm coming. Hello. I'll set this up for you. No candles. Mm, next blackout we have, lady, I promise you candles. Hey, didn't you used to be the bellhop here? Yeah, about 40 years ago. Now I own this place. My luck, I'm back to being a billboy again. There's a strike on. Don't you remember us? No, oh, ma'am. George, remember him? He was our bellhop. Yeah, I've always cherished those wonderful moments we shared. <laughs> it's 40 years. Who's going to remember? Anything else I can do? Oh, I can manage. <laughs> you could have fooled me. <laughs> Here. Huh? Gee, a quarter. Thanks a lot. Of course, now remember, 40 years ago, your honeymoon, right? That's right. Did you ever hear the cost of living index? <laughs> you ever hear about poverty? No, but I'm learning. <laughs> All right, George, let's have a toast. <clears throat> to prune juice. At a dollar, it better be a wonder drug. No, George, to us. To a wonderful life filled with happiness, riches, and love. That's the exact toast that you made 40 years ago. Remember? Yeah. What a dreamer I was. No, George, you're too hard on yourself. We've had a good life. Uh, nothing but the best. The best mortgages, the best doctor bills. I've been happy as long as I had you. And then what about the plans? The big house, travel. <laughs> travel. Furthest we ever went was the hospital for your deliveries. No, Martha, what did I ever give you? Well, five wonderful children. Sure. Four girls who burned their bras and left their husbands and a 39-year-old hippie who makes candles. <laughs> I'm a failure. What about that novel I was going to write? You still can, George. Nah, I've been in the drugstore 40 years and I'll always be there. The only writing I ever did was the open and close sign on the door. Well, don't say I didn't help. The swing shift at the candy factory was no picnic, you know. I'm sorry, Martha. I never intended you to work. I didn't mind. Anyway, things are going to get better. Didn't the president just say that prosperity just around the corner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, George. Oh, look. Oh, the old family brooch. <laughs> I haven't seen that for 39 years. <laughs> Not that I blame you after we found out all the stones were fakes. Well, I'll admit it's a little flashy, but... I always kept it, George. You know why? Or buy it. No. I kept it because you gave it to me. And I'll always love you for that. Why, thank you, Martha. Well, been a busy day. Hmm? Yeah, I'm bushed. <sighs> now, uh, I'll be right back. Don't you go to sleep now. <laughs> You didn't fall asleep, did you? Yeah. Asleep on this lumpy mattress? <laughs> I put to sleep, but I'm... This bed's too small. You didn't used to think so. It wasn't so much of you then. You didn't snore then either. Yeah. Well, maybe you should have married Miles. He's so deaf now, he'd never hear the noise you make. Listen, Don Juan. I put up with your fooling around all these years. The, the dancer and that lady pharmacist and even Rachel Merman. So don't you bring up Miles to me. A man makes a few mistakes years ago and you won't let him forget. <laughs> I know, George. You're right. What's done's done. No more arguing, hmm? Have I told you lately that I love you? Even without all the fancy things I promised? Even with all the problems? Even, George. Even? You're some woman, Martha Pomerantz. Oh, no. Three guesses, it's your mother. Don't answer, George. Are you sure? 
Absolutely. You know, you should have done that 40 years ago. It's not too late, George, is it? I hope not, Martha. I hope not. Happy anniversary, Martha. Happy anniversary, George. <laughs> <laughs>